Bronx Masquerade, page 74, Tanisha Scott. If Tyrone calls me Carmel Cutie one more time, I'll scream. I turn to cut my eyes at him and find Judy Ann staring at me again. Even after I turn away, I can feel her eyes stroking the back of my head. I'm so sick of people making a big deal over my good hair. I've caught her pawing my hair just last week. I reached back and grabbed a finger before she had a chance to pull away. I spun around, more aggravated than angry, and said, Look, it's just hair. It's not magic, so don't go rubbing it for good luck. Trust me, it hasn't brought me any. Reynard stifled a laugh. You never know when that boy's paying attention. Of course, Judy Ann made it out like she didn't know what I was talking about, swearing up and down she hadn't touched a single hair on my head. But I'd seen that hungry look in her eyes, like I had something she wanted. It was the same look my cousin Faith always gives me just before she says, I sure wish I had good hair like yours, or I wish I was light like you, followed by, then the boys would like me better, which isn't true, if you ask me. But try telling that to my cousin, or to Judy Ann. If she doesn't quit bugging me, I'm going to ask Mr. Ward to change my seat. She's why I chopped all my hair off last year. Well, people like her. My mother freaked when she saw me. My bangs were cut straight across my brow, and the sides were sort of squared at the neck. I looked like a clown, minus the red nose. It was the best I could do on my own. And it looked better than that time I washed in detergent to kink it up so I could have an afro like my cousin's. Anyway, Mom hated it so much, she finally forked over money for a visit to the hair salon to have it cut professionally. Served her right. I'd begged her to let me cut my hair off before. But your hair is so beautiful, she'd say. Why would you want to cut it? My mind flashed to the school cafeteria that afternoon. I'd walked past a group of would-be girlfriends who sucked their teeth at me and said my name like it was curdled milk. They couldn't wait to spit it out. Here comes Miss High, yellow thinking she's all that with her so good hair, said one. Far as I'm concerned, she ain't nothing, said another. Less than nothing, said a third. I shook off the memory. Look, Mom, I said, you don't understand. But she wasn't listening. Most girls you know would kill to have your hair, she said. That's just it, Mom. They hate me for it, and they hate my skin. I can't do anything about my skin, okay? But my hair, I can fix. I lost the argument, of course. Then, three weeks later, I cut it anyway. It's growing back now, and I've decided to let it. I mean, it's not like I can win, you know? I've tried dressing down in t-shirts and baggy pants with no makeup, and it's still either, come here, pretty mama, from cocky boys like Wesley, so I have absolutely no use for, or getting grief from girls I used to want as friends. I even thought about getting brown contact lenses once to cover up my green eyes, but my friend Sterling talked me out of it. He's light-skinned, too, so he knows where I'm coming from. He said he used to twist himself into a pretzel until, over it until he realized... God loves him just the way he is. Besides, he told me, if I did start wearing colored contacts, those girls would only say I was trying to be something I'm not. And he's right. So I give up. Let them say what they want. I am not a skin color or a hank of wavy hair. I'm a person. And if they don't get that, it's their problem, not mine. I'm better off with friends like Deandra and Janelle, who know I'm more than what I look like. They know I've got a brain and I know how to use it. They're no dummies either. That's why I asked Mr. Ward if the three of us could do a group project on the women of the Harlem Renaissance for extra credit. We had our first meeting at my house. Can we do Zora Neale Hurston, asked Chanel. I know we read Their Eyes Are Watching God in class, but she wrote a bunch of other stuff too. You're right, I said. Good idea. I picked up my pad and wrote Z Hurston at the top. Okay, that's a good start, but I think we should cover some women that you don't hear about so much. Like Georgia Douglas Johnson. I read some of her work in a book called 3,000 Years of Black Poetry. I'd never heard of her before, and I bet nobody else in class has either. Cool, said Deandra. Maybe I should read that book and see if I can get a couple of ideas. You can borrow it from the library, I said. Soon as I return it, that is. We all laughed. I'm notorious for turning library books in late. Meanwhile, Deandra, you can start working on portraits of these sisters so we can use them for our report covers when we're done. I didn't wait for her to volunteer because I knew she wouldn't. 
For somebody who has talent, she spends an awful lot of energy hiding it. But I figure if enough people tell her she's good, she'll start believing it. That means people actually have to see her work. I'm going to make sure they do, even if I have to keep volunteering her for projects till we graduate. She's not about to say no to me. She knows I'm stubborn when I want something. Fine, said Deandra. I'll do the portraits, but don't look at me when Mr. Ward sees those report covers and bust out laughing. Laughing? What do you mean laughing? Janelle and I looked at each other. I nodded on the count, and on the count of three, we jumped on Deandra and tickled her till tears of laughter squirted out her eyes. Them's my girls. They don't care what I look like. They know the only difference between my color and theirs is that the slave master who owned my family raped my great-great-grandma instead of theirs. And like my dad says, that ain't nothing to celebrate or be stuck up about.